Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. It is WCR Nation, and I really appreciate you checking this out. So, if this is your first time here, listening, watching, whatever you're doing, awesome. Thanks for coming. My name is Jersey. Have a look around. Hopefully, this episode isn't the worst thing you've seen on the internet today, and you want to go watch some other episodes. Now, this is episode, like, 60s, like, so you have so much to do. This comes out every single week on Friday. It is always 30 minutes-ish. Uh, podcast, so you got a lot of content to follow up on. Now, if you are one of the cool kids, somebody who watches uh, every single week or listens to our podcast, you've given us a thumbs up, you've subscribed to our YouTube channel, you've commented, what's going on? It's because of you that I keep doing this show. So, thank you. Thank you for giving me something to do every week. Uh, and if you are the next tier up, if you are one of the elites, you are one of the cool kids who does all that stuff I said, and you order your supplies through me, well, what's going on? It's because of you that I get to eat name brand cereal. So thank you very, very much. It's uh, awesome. Uh, if you have an order uh, that you'd like to put in or questions, give me a call or shoot me a text, even better, 862-312-2026. Let me know if there's an order in your cart. I would love to put that in. I get credit for that too. So it's like a virtual high five of awesomeness so if you have any order big or small please let me put it in i definitely appreciate that so give me a call shoot me a text awesome if you are watching this video on youtube right now and you haven't clicked the little thumbs up in the bottom right hand corner i'm going to give you a minute no i'm not i'm going to give you three seconds to click the thumbs up in three two one good you clicked it i really appreciate that guys it does help us out so thank you thank you thank you um, a few shout outs this week that I want to give, uh, first off, John Page, what's going on, man? What is up? He is one of the elite. I appreciate it. Salvin, what's going on, man? Uh, Mr. Awesome. Um, Big Squeegee. Now listen, I want to give you a shout out. I'm pretty sure you're Mike Nichols. Like I looked on the little picture and I think that's you. And I don't even think you watched this, uh, but you, you said, Hey, Steve-O, and totally shouted him out on the last episode and just left me by the wayside. So it's cool. It's whatever, man. I get it. It's cool. Steve-O is awesome. I get it, man. Just to be second tier is pretty awesome for me. So uh, if you haven't watched it last week, we did an episode with Steve-O. So yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, real quick to touch on, the huge convention is coming up. Um, but we're doing some lives uh, on the Huge Convention's Facebook page for the next two weeks. We're going to be interviewing people, just talking, shooting the stuff about things, so definitely check that out if you have the time that's on the Huge Convention's Facebook page. Uh, the winner from this week is Tyler Sodi. Uh, with the comments, uh, I read the title and just had to watch kind of thing. You know. So what's going on, man? I appreciate you checking it out. Um, you won. You won a $50 credit and the swag bag for, um, that's a t-shirt, that is the sticker pack, that is the pin, that's all of it. So all you need to do is email me your address and information and uh, we'll get that sent out to you. Josh at windowcleaningresource.com. And if you want to win, because every week we do a win, uh, giveaway and we pick a winner at random every week, you can be that person. All you need to do is comment on the YouTube episode, and we pick a winner every single week. Now, if you are listening to this on uh, iTunes, go ahead and leave me a review. I would appreciate that. But anyway, whew, okay, all that BS is out of the way. Now, uh, Huge Convention is coming up. It is August 23rd and 24th this year, 2018, and the uh, Software Service Software Summit, I always get this mixed up, is the 22nd of August. So the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, it's going down in Atlanta at the uh, Marriott Marquis. It's going to be so awesome. So awesome. I'm so excited. Just people are like, why do you keep talking about it? Because it's that awesome. Go and you'll really realize. That's coming up. That's all I'm going to say on it. Cool. Let's get into this week's episode. Uh, I'm sorry for my rambling. But this week, we're talking about something that uh, I'm probably going to get some death threats and some emails and some harsh words talked to me. That's cool. I appreciate it. Like I said, you guys can't do anything wrong in your own business because it's your business, right? Whatever you choose to do is right. But this week's episode is Cleaning Windows Doesn't Matter. That's it. Good night. Thank you. No, uh, but uh, 
cleaning windows doesn't matter. And you're like, oh, it sure does matter. It's my life. What are you talking about, right? But it doesn't matter. Think about what you're doing. The window cleaning itself doesn't matter. Like, clean is clean, right? If you go to somebody's house and you clean a window and somebody else goes to a house and they clean the window, it is assumed that the window is clean because clean is a thing, right? If it's dirty and they did a crappy job and there's streaks all over it, well, that's not a clean window. But cleaning the window doesn't matter. You could have the cleanest windows in town. Be the one who does the, the cleanest. You make the cleanest windows. It doesn't matter. It's not going to sell you a job or make you have a successful business. Uh, cleaning the windows just happens to be the byproduct of us owning and starting and running a business. It does. There's guys out there and gals who own dog poop picking up services, right? That's a service. No, that's not like window cleaning. Don't send me hate mail for that. But that is a service, right? But they still have to build the business for the service. Like That's just fact. Uh, so do you. So if you're focusing on the windows, you're doing it wrong. Man, uh, I, it, it's been said that in the top 10 things that are important to your business, a clean window is not one of them. And that's the truth. There's so many other things that matter so much more than the cleanliness of the window. Now, like I said, you can't do crap work. If you do crap work, you're not going to have business. Your business is going to fail and you're not going to be eating name brand cereal like me. But if you do good window cleaning, but you have a strong foundation, a strong business, you're going to succeed. It's only going to keep growing. Now, I got done talking to Brandon. Brandon Vaughn, if you don't know, he's one of the uh, speakers and just got me thinking kind of on this whole thing. But here's the case. This is, this is the whole thing. If your business, the structure, the building of the business isn't strong, your business will fail. You won't grow like you want to. Cleaning windows doesn't matter. It's your business that matters. Running your business. So what do we focus on? People sometimes lose sight on what to focus on, especially in business, especially in a service business like ours. If you lose sight of the business aspect, so just like, you know, bread and butter, like the, the, the foundation, the meat and potatoes, what do they say? The other old terms, right? If you lose sight of that, all you got left is a job. Let that sink in for a second. If you're great at cleaning windows, but your business sucks, you just have a job. You just have a job with un, 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 no security, right? You just have an unreliable job. And you have to deal with a bunch of crap to have it. But if you build a business, strong foundation, good systems, good all of that, now you now you got yourself a business. You have yourself a company. Like, that is the truth of the matter. Um, you may be fast. The next guy might be even faster. doesn't matter right? It matters to efficiency in what you make an hour, maybe. But that part doesn't matter. Who's got the stronger business? Now, here's some things to think about. In business, any business, all business, there's a few different things that set up the business itself. Take out what you do apart and think of the small business. There's advertising, there's marketing, there's customer relations, there's retention, there's frequency, right? There's, there's, there's structure, there's your systems, there's all of that that make up what your business is, not what your business does. If you lose track of that, you end up kind of going down the crapper. It's just the truth of the matter. If you lose sight of the business side of things and you're too focused on cleaning windows or what soap to use or what squeegee channel is better than the next one, you lost sight of the business. Now, I am on the opposite side where I've always owned businesses. I've Since I was a little kid, I sold candy out of my backpack at school, right? I had a bike store when I was like nine out of my garage. Like, I've always had businesses. You probably have too. We're entrepreneurs, right? So the business side doesn't matter. Or the, the, the what you're doing, but the business matters. That's what's interesting to me. I don't know if you like that or not. Leave it down in the comment if you are interested in the business side of it or if you're more interested in the cleaning the windows side of it. I like the business side. But anyway, there's so much more to your business than the, than the, the what, right? So one of the big things that people always, always lose sight of because A, they don't think that they're big enough for this need. 
They don't think that they're uh, structured enough for this, right? They don't think, well, I'm just, uh, I may be a one-man show, or I just have one employee, or I just have two employees, right? You may have only a few employees, and it does not matter whatsoever. But what it is, is systems. Systems are huge. It sounds so cliche, but listen to this. McDonald's. You've heard of that? It's a little burger chain. You might have them around you. McDonald's has a sign, right? Their sign shows you how to put a burger together so that every single burger is exactly the same. If you can do that, it doesn't matter who you put in the position. They look at the picture and they can make the exact same burger as the next person. Systemizing, systematizing your business is what creates value. It creates something that can grow. If you're just kind of like, you know, kicking a can down an alley and you just don't have that structure side of it, then it's very hard to grow, right? If you say, hey, I need groceries. I'm just going to drive until I find a grocery store. It's very hard. You could drive a very long time before you find one or you could drive very short. You just don't know until you Google the address and find one and go directly to that app. That, that that's, that's what systems do. When you can build that value in the business, you're able to then grow it or just make it stronger. Like if you're a one-man show, which is awesome. Again, it doesn't matter. When you make a dollar, you make a dollar. Like when I make a dollar, somebody's got a ton of employees, I make like seven cents, you know? So completely nothing's wrong the way that you do it. Let me get that out of the way. But if you're a one-man show, Think about if you could make your business stronger, right? Think if you could make it uh, more reliable, if you could make it more, you know, uh, uh, close to being not perfect. Nothing's perfect, but closer to secure, right? Guaranteed almost. You do it. You do it in a heartbeat. All of us would. So building a structure or a system to your business, how you do things, how you do your advertising, marketing calendars, we've talked about that. Building all of this into every single process so you could, in theory, have a binder and everything in that binder is your business, that is a strong business. That's a business that maybe, maybe someday you would want to go and sell. Now, right now might not be the time. But I'm telling you, as business owners, we all have ADD. We all kind of want to find the next thing or do the next thing. Maybe there's going to be a time where you sell your business. And to be ready for that, you'll need to have that kind of binder of structure. So definitely, definitely uh, work on your structure. Work on your systems to your business and build a plan. It's uh, huge, huge for growth. Number one thing. Uh, cliche uh, structure side of things, foundation, if you will, leaning tower piece of blah, blah, blah. Don't build a, a foundation, a strong foundation. You can't build on top of it. It is true. Cliche as it may sound. But anyway, that's a big one. Uh, another one is uh, advertising grows business, right? If you say, well, I'm so busy right now. I can't, I can't advertise. I just don't have the time right now. I don't have the client. I, I'm bucked out. I'm working 12 hours a day. I can't, I can't get any more. That's the biggest downfall you can do for your business is not advertising or striking when the iron's hot. right? If you're hungry, we talked about this. What's the best time to sell a cheeseburger on the radio? Noon. You're hungry. You're driving around looking for lunch. Where are you going to eat? Oh, the cheeseburger on that billboard looks awesome. Right? They advertise so that when it, you, it is in your brain, they're the ones that you pick. And advertising grows business. If you're not selling, right, you're dying. That is absolutely the truth because your customers are dying, to put it bluntly. Like there are some customers that will die off, right? You're going to lose that customer and there's people who are moved to another state. There's people who just move into a home or just don't want it done. Maybe they have uh, somebody else who's going to do it or maybe a family member offered to do it, right? You're going to lose work, so you need to advertise to keep filling that pot. And what happens in the pot, when you fill up a three-quart saucepan with three quarts, what do you do? You get a four-quart. Then you get a five-quart. You keep allowing yourself to take on more. Now, that looks different for everybody, so... Maybe you fire the crappy clients and only cherry pick to continue to create a stronger company. You make more an hour, but yet doing the same amount of work if you're a one-man show. If you are somebody who's into cruise or having, you know, that expansion, maybe your four-quart saucepan, that's so dumb. 
If Anyway, maybe yours is to hire more people, right? Maybe it's to free yourself up to do the office work. Maybe it's to get your first helper. Maybe it's to get your first employee, right? Exciting times. Maybe you're getting your 65th employee, right? Or you're adding your 12th truck. Still exciting, right? You're allowing yourself to continue to fill up. That is what advertising does. So don't lose sight of the selling slash advertising, the, the, all of that. The big thing with advertising and selling that people tend to forget too is route work will always circulate. People will not be in business. If you're a route guy, uh, this is always our, our theory. Route work will always circulate, right? The same businesses will not be in business. They will not be in the same area. They will not necessarily even want a window cleaner. Times may be tough. The market may crash. They may just suck at their own businesses. They may not want you. You're going to continue to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink until you just wither away to nothingness unless you're selling. ABS, man, always be selling. Uh, that's a shout out to Michael Mole if you know who that guy is. ABS, it's, it's a big theory. So sell, advertise. That all helps you grow. Continuing to grow you can build it off that structure, the base, and just go up as, as healthy or strong as you want to go or as big as you want to go. It's, the world's really your kind of oyster at that point. But another one that kind of goes with the structure side of things and the selling side and where you're going to be is goal setting. Goal setting is huge when you need to track things. Now, again, we just talked with Vaughn. He was saying how he redoes his strategies sometimes a couple times a year because he may have a five-year plan that five-year plan may change four times in one year it just depends on what's going on but tracking and setting goals even if they're obtainable one month what do you want to do this month right this month right now is august right what are you going to do in august what about september september is huge it's a huge month what are you going to do in september and how are you going to do that don't just write a goal like, oh, I hope to be awesome and make $100,000 that month. Well, sure, that's 100% attainable, but how? Right? It's a goal if you can achieve it, but how are you going to achieve it? And setting goals is huge. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be written in stone. It just has to be obtainable or within reach. So even if it's not obtainable, but yet it's out of reach, goals are what make you strive. And if you search your goals, even when it comes down to the D-Day, you know how hard you have to work. Say you're four weeks out from the end of your goal. You can look at it and go, okay, I need X amount to make this goal happen. And uh, that means X amount per week. Let's just X amount per day. Let's do it. Now, after the day happens, you go, oof, that wasn't a good day. Now I need X amount per day from here. And now that day is super great. Oh, cool, man. That drops the whole thing. If you track your goals and get to where you're going... It's like we talked about. You want to go get groceries? You type in the address to the grocery store in your phone and it will take you there. The fastest route possible, but you'll know you're on track because you're looking at a GPS. It's the same thing with goals. Know where you're going, but more importantly, how you're going to get there. And it's different, like I said. It's different for everybody. But making these things, don't lose sight of all this stuff as you're just looking for Hey, I, I'm a window cleaner. I own a window cleaning business. What do you do? Uh, you know, I clean bird poop off windows. Uh, you know, don't lose sight of the business side of things. It doesn't matter what you're selling. You could be selling widgets. But if your business is strong and you're doing all these things and not losing sight of these while everything else is happening, man, you're going to succeed. You're going to be huge. Huge. Speaking of huge, thehugeconvention.com. If you haven't gotten your tickets, get them. Anyway, sorry. I had to plug it. Um... So another one that I want to talk about real quick that gets missed a lot, and this is probably the hardest, hardest one on the list of like things, right? Is positive cash flow. Positive cash flow is so hard. Listen, I, I know a guy who um, <laughs> he bought a business. This guy bought a business. And the first thing he wanted to do when he bought the business was buy a Harley. He always wanted a Harley. But now he bought a business, right? He saw the numbers and knew what he was going to be making and all that and did his research and the, whatever. And the first thing he wanted to do is buy a Harley. And uh, he asked me, he was like, man, I got this. It's the opportunity, dude. It's done. I'm going to buy this Harley. You know, you think that's a good idea, right? I mean, it's pretty much like my celebration. I said, no, that Harley may be your February's payments for payroll. 
or you know that may get you through that hard week that you have the super blizzard or that you know having a positive cash flow is crucial now listen we're squirrels we're always we got to get it when we can when you get it you get it when you don't you don't and you have to go back to your caches to pull out when you don't have it like think about february i don't want to think about february it's like 100 degrees here today but february uh it's cold no one is calling you it doesn't matter if you stood on the corner of the road with a sign that said one dollar house wash or one dollar window cleaning no one's gonna do it it just isn't gonna happen so what happens is you have to plan for that coming out of spring there's a lot of reinvesting in equipment awesome that's awesome but the thing is don't put yourself in a position where you don't have the cash flow to get yourself on those times hard times Everybody's been there. I was there. I remember in the very beginning, 10 years ago. I mean, gosh, I, I, I packed it away. But there's days where you look at it and go, well, this ba- this bill is uh, got a 10-day grace period. But this one's got a 15. So, you know, if I just uh, chill for the next week, I got to pick up one job. I could pay this bill. And, you know, that's what happens in the beginning. There's slow times. You cannot be instantly successful. It just doesn't happen. You have to plan for that. Positive cash flow is huge. When you get that first $10,000 month, $5,000 month, $100,000 month, when you get those big numbers that first month, you want to celebrate and go just ape poo. You know, you just want to go spend it all. But having that money is positive cash flow for when you don't. That makes a strong company. Remember, what we're trying to do is focus on the business, not what. It's the business. And positive cash flow is huge on that side of it. Um, keep it in mind. Uh, there's What I've done too with positive cash flows, I, I did for quite a while, is I budgeted. And I needed to have X amount in my account, my business account, every single week. I needed to have that amount in there. And that was my my cushion. That was my thing. you know, And that amount changed. Over time, obviously, and, and eventually you stopped kind of looking at it that way. But in the very beginning, that's crucial to know that you have that cushion. Um, there's times where I had my largest account, largest job we ever did. Uh, I did them for four years to this point and uh, handed it in. They always paid with credit card. You know, they changed over some ownership and, and what it was. Um, and uh, yeah. You know, send them the invoice, man, here's the day I'm going to get that big old money just credit card sent to me. And they go, oh, great, okay, we'll take that invoice. Well, uh, usually I get a credit card and uh, run that. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, we don't we don't even have cards. We don't we do not do that anymore. We're, we're all net uh, on that, and uh, it'll be net 90. <laughs> net 90, that's not a thing. It was a thing. And, uh, man, just think about that. Like, this was probably six to eight guys for an entire week with lift rental like it's a big job and they just decided that ah, we're not gonna pay you for a while like you have to now float all that money and uh luckily you know in business we were a bigger cushion right we had the money to do that because we were ready for that rainy day but a hit like that where you're not even planning things are going great and you just get the rug pulled out from under you that happens positive cash flow always will help you with that just plan for the crap storm that's going to happen man we're in small business this kind of thing happens who hasn't had i just talked to a guy this morning whose all of his uh equipment was stolen every last bit was stolen out of his truck water fed stuff uh traditional stuff it was a window cleaner it had to have been they stole everything out of his truck he was left with nothing they even took the towels the towels he had dirty towels they took those like he's got nothing imagine that imagine waking up one day and having nothing no equipment to do the jobs like that's what happens that's why you need positive cash flow anyway not to be the down and doom and gloom type person but but that's a big one i touched on equipment before yes i'm a sales rep for window cleaning resource yes you probably think this is me just trying to plug that my number happens to be 862-312-2026 but alas it is not 
But investing in those structures and making your company sound stronger is equipment. Uh, another story, I just got a guy uh, just talked to maybe a week ago. He's retrofitting all of his trucks. He's getting rid of everything, and they're getting all of one thing. One thing. One system, one type of pole, one type of pump, one type of hose. The whole thing. All the trucks. I want it all uniform so when one piece breaks everything, I can fix it. I can interchange it. I have options. It just would make things so much better. That's awesome. When you get to that point, you have the positive cash flow to do this kind of thing. And you can reinvest in your company. To make it stronger equipment-wise, that builds efficiency. That makes you faster. Being faster makes more money per hour. It makes you a stronger company. What if you made 65 bucks an hour right now? High five Man, you're doing freaking awesome. What if you could do $75 an hour? That's a $10 an hour raise. Like, that's what some people make an hour. You just raise that. Like, that's phenomenal, right? If you can make more money, you can do things faster, which means in turn you make more money an hour. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be healthier. And you're just going to be a more comfortable company. So equipment's a huge one. Yes, I sell equipment. But I was a big proponent of always having new equipment. I always had what I called the store which was uh, shelving with bins and every single product piece that we had, squeegee handle, there was th two or three types that we always ran. There was bins, brand new ones on every one. If the one breaks or one falls or you lose it or something, we got new stuff. If the handle breaks, the, the uh, uh, cover that we used on one of them falls off or something, we got new ones. We got new towels ready in boxes and bags. We have... Uh, new sleeves ready. We have new buckets on a belt. I have regular belts. I get everything. Why? Because having brand new equipment makes you better. What if you got to deal with crap all the time, breaking or not being, you know, subpar stuff from 20 years ago? Just you spend so much time messing with the crap that it just doesn't make it worth it. So invest. If you got it, invest in equipment. It will help your time. It'll help your bottom line. It'll help you make more money, be stronger as a company frequency is another one that people lose sight of sometimes i hear this all the time people hate route i even hear people go oh man i'm busy all year round bull crap you're not busy like you are in fall in winter you may be have people but you're not busy like what if you could work 40 hours a week every single week or in your case if you want to have freedom what if you could work 20 hours 20 healthy hours every week that's frequency. Frequency is huge. Frequency comes down to planning how you're scheduling. Remember we talked about uh, if somebody box at the price, you can say, hey, we have openings in August. Um, I could take $50 off for you to fill these spots. You're building this frequency in slower times you're not selling. Or what about that February? Right? What if you could do commercial accounts in February if you're in a warmer climate? I know I moved south and forget about the wonderful winters of Wisconsin, but um what if you can? What if you can clean commercial buildings in February? What if January? What if like you took a week off, maybe you know around the first of the year, and came back to a full schedule of cleaning? Like that's that's awesome. That's strength in your company. That's building the foundation. That's like making sure that you're strong. And that's why cleaning windows doesn't matter at all. What does matter is the business behind you cleaning windows. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters how you're doing it. it. matters the strength of it. Don't have a job. Have a business. So, yeah, there you go. That's, that's all of them. Just, you can't do anything wrong, but I sure can tell you, you can end things very quick. And Brandon actually did, uh, this year actually, his talk is going to be uh, three easy steps to destroying your business. I think that's awesome. And, uh, I guarantee they're going to talk about some of the stuff people lose, leave behind. But anyway, check it out. Here it is. We come to this part of the show every single week where I want to give you a code. Now, I want you to go out, buy your supplies through me. That's how I make credit. That's awesome. Hopefully, it's just in your cart. You even text me be like, dude, what's up? It's in my cart. Make it happen. I got, you know, uh, we hold cards on file if you request. We can do that on our private service. You, you can literally text me like, hey. It's in my cart, man. Put it in. You don't ever have to do anything else other than that. You shop in the middle of the night. I put your order in. Uh, I have everything else I need. It's, it's, it's as simple as you could possibly be. I want to be your rep. I want to be your window cleaning rep. 
So please uh, call or text. Like I said, text is always better. You never know what I'm doing. 862-312-2026. This week's code for 5% off, if you order from me, is uh, it doesn't matter. That's the code. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's the code. Uh, so call me and put your order in, big or small, let me know that and we'll get you 5% off. Go to the huge convention, buy your tickets from me if you don't have them yet. There's very, very few we can get uh, still left, so please let me know. Um, but until next week, go out there and be epic.